ignored in this country. Thank you. Absolutely ignored. All right, thank you. Thank you. Very good cutting edge. Now ask Mr. Wilson. Good afternoon, Senators. My name is Martin Wilson. Doctors first suspected that I had Lyme in September of 2009. By that time, I had already been feeling poorly for several months. They ran their standard Western blot test, which came back negative, and they took me off the antibiotic that they had prescribed. I wasn't conclusively diagnosed with Lyme, diagnosed with Lyme until October 2015. That is eight years, over 25 doctors, including five neurologists, six internists, four infectious disease specialists, two rheumatologists, and two cardiologists. Long-term antibiotics, intravenous rocephrine, intravenous immunoglobulin protocols, and every day, every single movement is painful. Slightly more than half of the doctors that I saw concluded that I had Lyme. Most were unable to help. All of my organs are inflamed. My immune system and nervous systems are compromised. I'm in pain. All of this primarily because the Western blot test is approximately 44% reliable and doctors are uninformed. It is not my purpose to stand here and cry that I might have been diagnosed earlier, treated earlier, or perhaps enjoyed a better outcome. Unfortunately, this nightmare of misdiagnosis is all too prevalent, as you've heard. What about the child that gets bitten this week? Everyone here recognizes that early treatment results in better outcomes. Without easy access to adequate testing, many more will be doomed to my fate. I am fortunate to have good medical insurance. I have the flexibility in my work schedule and the financial resources to finally arrive at a definitive diagnosis. Most people don't enjoy these luxuries. The Western blot test is approximately 44% reliable. That's 56 missed cases out of a possible 100. That's a failing grade in anyone's class. Those are worse odds than flipping a coin for a diagnosis. This test was designed for statistical reporting to the CDC, not for diagnosis. The test measures a patient's antibody response to the disease. This essentially means it sees a shadow of the disease, not the disease itself. What happens when the test is given and it's high noon in the patient's body? It casts no shadow. The patient is misdiagnosed and doomed to suffer. It is noteworthy that three other states have enacted legislation requiring doctors to inform patients in writing that a negative Western blot does not rule out a diagnosis of Lyme infection. The test is that bad, yet doctors rely on it. Every single test in the USA is based upon one copy of one Lyme organism, so its usefulness in identifying any other strain of Lyme is limited. It is widely recognized that certain vital components of the test are not included, namely OSPA, OSPB, and OSPD, among others. In 1994, Dr. Patricia Coyle of Stony Brook co-authored a paper entitled Early and Specific Antibody Response to OSPA in Lyme Disease. The conclusion reads, a specific antibody response to OSPA occurs early in Lyme disease. This is likely to have diagnostic implications. Doctors Coyle and Schutzer developed a diagnostic test based on OSP back then. Currently, George Mason University has developed a urine test using nanotrap technology, but still based upon this most prevalent indicator of Lyme infection, OSPA. Dr. Benjamin Luft of Stony Brook has developed a much broader assay based upon the most common proteins present in all strains of Lyme, including OSPA, OSPB, OSPD. This has been known for 25 years, and we are still awaiting satisfactory testing. Polymerase chain testing, polymerase, polymerase chain reaction testing, PCR, is essentially a DNA test and it is on the cusp of being widely available and affordable. The Oxford Nanopore system promises to enable PCR-based testing from a desktop computer in your doctor's office. It is currently being tested around the globe as well as aboard the International Space Station. 
There are numerous laboratories across the country that are permitted to furnish tests in 49 states, but not here. Why not New York? Or better yet, we have Stony Brook, Cornell, Binghamton, Columbia, and many more. We are New York, the epicenter of the financial world. We're also the epicenter of Lyme disease. We should take, we should, why should the leading research be done at John Hopkins or Tulane or George Mason? This is our fight. We should have the funding here at our disposal to utilize it in our own state to provide testing that meets our criteria and standards, not the CDC standards. All of these technologies can and should be embraced to assist better and earlier diagnosis. At this time, no single test is foolproof, but used in conjunction, all of these tests can certainly improve upon the current 50% failure rate. The citizens of New York deserve better. The CDC Western Blot measures 10 bands. Interestingly, Stony Brook Lyme Disease Laboratory tests for 27 bands but they only report the bans if the doctor requests that additional information. I was told that only approximately 30% of doctors request that additional information. That means 70% of those people tested by that lab receive less information than is readily available. The patient is paying for the test. Aren't we entitled to our money's worth? It's like bringing your car for inspection and being allowed to drive away with no brakes. This information is critical, crucial for an early diagnosis. Stony Brook has these records going back many years. It is of vital interest to make this data public. We could then get a true picture of the extent of this epidemic. I am sure that MS, ALS, Alzheimer's, and autoimmune researchers would be interested to know how many of their subjects have had exposure to Lyme. Anecdotally, there are many connections, but without hard data, such connections are meaningless. How many people have Lyme? We don't know. How many people die of heart disease or brain disease as a long-term result of Lyme? We don't know. In the information age, this is totally unacceptable. It is obvious that New York must act independently, at least at first to clearly identify the nature and extent of this issue. The only way to exemplify our need for federal funds is through hard data, the collection of which is one of the mandates of the 2014 report of this task force. And I read the report, and Senator Hannon and the rest of you members, I'd like to thank you for enacting legislation that protects physicians and therefore patients because it is truly an arduous process to try and get treatment in this state. In conclusion, I would request, implore, demand, and humbly beg that this task force and the legislative body it represents bring all of their resources to bear to implement the following. To, to promote the use of Stony Brook Lyme Lab for Western blot tests rather than private commercial labs. I myself have seen a huge disparity in the results from tests done back to back on me. To educate and instruct physicians to avail themselves of all the information that's available from this test. Because if you get a test that's CDC negative, but in the margin you see it has OSPA and OSPB and OSPD, you got Lyme. And everyone, this is no secret. Everyone knows this. Every researcher knows this. It's Lyme 101. It's basic. This information needs to be passed on to doctors who can then make a judgment call. Yeah, I'm going to give you 28 days of doxycycline prophylactically. Okay. Um, they could also probably instantly approve on the Western blot test by expanding on it with Dr. Luff's assay that he developed about seven or eight years ago, which is much broader and identifies things other than Borrelia burgdorferi. Uh, there was a study done on seagulls. They're rife with Borrelia guarini. Nobody knows what we have at this point. Um, number two, to immediately collect and make public all data from Stony Brook. I believe the private sector can then use this data, 
data to solicit federal funds for research and development, better tests, and better treatment protocols. Lastly, to retrain physicians on the latest developments, testing, and treatment protocols for Lyme through routine continuing education requirements. They have to do it anyway. Let's heighten their awareness. Um, and promote early prophylactic treatment for Lyme where, where cases are suspected or probable. N nobody ever died from doxycycline. And with what I'm experiencing today, you want to talk about financial costs? I used to make over $500,000 a year. I used to pay over $100,000 in taxes. I now make less than $100,000 a year and pay less than $30,000 a year in taxes. So right there, bullet point, dollar for dollar, you're losing. You're invested with me because you just lost a bucket load of money for over the last 10 years. Financially, my insurance company, I wouldn't want to be them. They just signed on to continue my IVIG for another year, 10000 a week. That's a half a million bucks. And most people that are suffering like me don't have access to that kind of treatment. So they suffer. Right now my hands are burning, my feet are burning, my legs are going numb. My tongue, I get inappropriate sensations and tastes. Every joint in my body, every muscle in my body hurts all day. That's Lyme disease. And I'll probably die in 15 years from heart related. My aorta is enlarged. I have three nerve bundle blocks to my heart. My cardiologist doesn't know about Lyme disease, but he's telling me what it's doing to my heart. I have lesions on my brain. It's on the MRI. It's suggested that that's actually nematodes infected with Lyme that are eating my brain. It's a scary, scary, scary thing. Had I been treated early, perhaps, as you, perhaps, our life would be a lot different today. And the cost, just in dollars and cents, the cost is extraordinary. One last thing, I'm not insensitive to Zika virus. 215 cases in this country this year, 1.8 billion earmarked for research, $20 million nationwide for Lyme in the federal budget. That's a disgrace. The CDC says 300,000 new cases every year. That's epidemic. We need more than 20 million. 20 million is paltry. And if we have to do it here in New York, we can do it here in New York. We can lead. We can show the federal government, the CDC, whomever, what's going on and what we need. We have the data. Ask Stony Brook. They have the data. Right. I'm sorry for ranting. Don't, do not apologize. I appreciate your, your uh, uh, attention and patience. Thank you very much for your passionate um, testimony. It's so appreciated. And you know what? We are all here today because of you, Jill, and every other patient and people that haven't been diagnosed with Lyme disease that probably have it. So it's because of you and your testimonies. And I'm so sorry for what you're going through. But I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today and participating. God bless you all.